In this video, let's take a look at the solution for quicksort. In Replit, let's begin by defining the function signature. Function quicksort, parentheses and curly braces. The function will have one parameter, arr, which represents the array to sort. For example, if we have an array and we pass that array into the quicksort function and log the return value to the console, we should see the elements sorted in ascending order. Now our first step is to find the pivot element. We know it is the last element in the array. So let pivot is equal to array of array dot length minus one. Step two, we traverse the array and put the elements into a left and right array. Let's create two arrays. Let left is equal to an empty array and right is equal to an empty array. Next, add a for loop to traverse the array. For, let i is equal to zero, i less than array dot length minus one, I plus plus. With each element in the array, we compare with pivot and then push into the appropriate array. So if array of i is less than the pivot element, push to the left array. Else, push to the right array. Repeat this for the left and right subarrays and eventually concatenate it with the pivot element. So return an array where we call quicksort on the left array, quicksort on the right array with pivot element in between the two. What we have here is recursion, so we need a base case to exit. And the base case is if the array contains one element. So at the top, if array dot length is less than two, return array. This is the quicksort algorithm in JavaScript. Let's verify by running the code. We see the sorted array. Our code works as expected. What I would like you to do is take a pen and paper and trace the function execution for a different array. Once for a sorted array and once for a reverse sorted array where the elements are in descending order. That will really help you understand the quicksort algorithm. All right, next it's time to determine the big O time complexity of our quicksort function. When it comes to quicksort, I would like to highlight both the worst case complexity and the average case complexity. The worst case complexity is O of n square. This happens when the array is already sorted. Instead of partitioning our array into smaller arrays, we end up partitioning into an empty array and a full array you end up comparing with every other element and that would be quadratic time complexity. However, quicksort algorithm is a popular algorithm because its average case complexity is O of n log n. We recursively divide the array into smaller arrays, which is log n, and we also have a for loop, which is O of n. Combine the two and we have O of n log n. Of course, the way to derive this complexity is complex and is out of scope for this fundamentals series. Now, it is very unlikely that you would sort an already sorted array. So the worst case complexity, even though is quadratic, the average case complexity is what matters with this algorithm. On a side note, it is also possible to implement the same algorithm 
without taking extra space. I'll leave a link to the code in the description down below for you to understand when you have the time. It is pretty helpful when you have space constraints. If you don't have any space constraints, you can go with the solution we have implemented now or you can go with the merge sort algorithm. How does merge sort work? Well, let's take a look at that in the next video.